Hey, uh, welcome. Uh, this is Ardit from Python Ho, and I'll try to keep this short and to the point. So this is a tutorial where I'll show you how to build this web map with Python. So yeah, you'll build this from scratch, and all you need to know is a little bit of Python. So uh, in, in order to understand what the code uh, means, you need to uh, know the Python basics. So um, let me show you what the map contains. So this is a web map. And I have this as a, a local HTML file, but you can easily put this on a live server by just uploading the uh, HTML file there. And so uh, this contains three layers. It contains a map box, a base map, and then it contains a uh, point layer, which I can toggle on and off. So these are volcano locations. Uh, and it also has this polygon layers so it's like a corpleth map and it shows uh, the rate of unemployment so if you have red for high rates and you have yellow for not so high rates and then low rates uh, with green and uh, what else uh, well uh, you can also have these pop-ups in these markers so it's quite an interactive map so these are being fetched from the data. And yeah, you know, let's go ahead and uh, build this map. Uh, so this is the file, I'll delete this and I'll not go and write the code from scratch. Uh, I'll show you the code here, the Python code, and I'll go and explain it uh, line by line. So we are importing two libraries here. Uh, we have volume and we have pandas. So Folium is a Python library that creates uh, web maps. And so basically, uh, this is like a binding of uh, JavaScript, HTML, and CSS code. So basically, what Python does is, uh, when you write this code, uh, you give Python instructions, and Python then will generate HTML, uh, JavaScript, and CSS code, and put that code inside a .html file, so that when you open this HTML file, you see the web map. So to make this work, uh, you need first you need Python, you need to have Python installed, and then you need Folium, and then uh, you need Pandas as well. And you know that to install Folium and Pandas, you can just go ahead and open a terminal, a command line, and do pip install uh, Folium, execute, and Folium will be installed, and you can do the same for Pandas. And once you have those installed, um, you need something else, which is the data. So I have two data sets here. I have uh, the volcanoes.txt file, uh, which contains, actually let me open it here. Uh, this contains the data for the points that you saw there. So basically uh, this contains some attributes of volcanoes and it also has these two very important columns which are the latitude and the latitude and the longitude so this allow you to map the points on a map and good now uh, you also have this uh, JSON file uh, which actually is not rendered very well in Atom so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open it with a notepad if you don't know about JSON then just go ahead and, and read a little bit about JSON files and basically this is like a big Python dictionary that has data and here you have uh, every polygon that you saw on the map. So for instance, uh, you have a polygon for this country and then you have for another country, Algeria. And uh, these are basically the vertexes of the polygons. So this define, this uh, actually draw the polygons on the map. And yeah, what you need to do is uh, you need to read these two files via Python uh, with the help of, of the volume source code, of course. And yep, yeah, mm, uh, you also see this shapefile.zip. Uh, Actually, this uh, contains, it, it's an archive file that contains shapefile. So this, uh, all these actually are referred as uh, shapefiles. Uh, that's like a convention because this is a real file that contains the geometry, but it also has uh, these associated files, like a projection file, uh, the file that contains the attributes and so on. So I'm showing you this shape file, 
uh, because uh, I actually converted this ship file to this uh, JSON file because volume volume is able to read J JSON files or GeoJSON files so JSON and GeoJSON is um, basically the same thing you can say uh, JSON is actually a uh, sorry GeoJSON is actually a JSON file uh, but with some spatial attributes so uh, GeoJSON is like a special case of uh, JSON like the data that I showed you is actually GeoJSON but you can uh, name it under a Geo JSON extension or a GeoJSON extension that doesn't matter the real thing that uh, makes a, a JSON file a GeoJSON is the actual data that are inside now normally when you get GIS data you, you'll probably get them as a shapefile so um, to convert a shapefile to a JSON file actually there may be a couple of ways including Python, you can also use, use Python libraries to uh, convert sh shapefiles to uh, JSON like Shapely but I won't go through that now because I, I don't want to uh, make this tutorial very uh, complex so uh, another way to do that is to use uh, QGIS which is a GIS software or another way, you don't need any software installed uh, you can use a service actually uh, which is this one here, uh, web service and yeah, um, you can find these files, the ship file, the txt and the json files you can find them uh, below the video in the description so if you want to convert uh, a ship file to a json file, uh, to a geo json file uh, you can just go here, choose file and then choose the ship file.zip where you have these uh, shape files and then here you specify EPSG4326 for this and save for this and just go convert to JSON and you will receive uh, this JSON file yeah that's it let's go back to the code now mm, close this uh, this is the Python code so what I'm doing here is I'm using pandas to read the uh, volcanos.txt file uh, this will load this data as a data frame, which is like a table, a pandas data frame, a very good structure table. And then uh, what you do is mm, uh, you create a map object with volume using the map method. And this map method expects some uh, parameters from you. Uh, first parameter is location. Uh, this expects a list as argument as value. And so in the list, uh, the list should be constructed uh, from a series of latitudes and a series of longitudes. Uh, this uh, latitudes and longitudes, you, you're getting these from the pandas data frame. Actually, I can do a, a very quick demonstration. Mm, I know to you, maybe here. So if you open Python, import pandas. And then if you uh, get this line, and I'll just copy this here. And then you say df, uh, what you get is a data frame uh, with the values. So you have this lat column there and lone column. And uh, yeah, basically what you're doing here then is you're accessing these values. And you have a zoom start, which is zoom uh, level that the map will, will have when, when it is loaded. Uh, you have ranges from 1 to 12, I think. Yeah, it goes up to 12. And then you have tiles. Uh, so this is uh, map box bright. You have a few available tiles there. So this is above the base map. Actually, I can show you what available tiles you have there. Um, import volume. And if you do help volume.map. Yep, uh, you'll see here that you can uh, input there OpenStreetMap, map quest open. You have stamen, it's a stamen terrain, stamen toner, and etc. Mm, good. Let's ignore this function for now. I'll go back to that later. Fiji, uh, this is another variable that I have defined here. Uh, this is a feature group. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm defining a feature group which contains a group of, uh, in this case, a group of markers. So let me go back to this a, a little bit later. And what I'm doing here is I have a loop that I am looping through these uh, latitude and longitude series. And I'm also looping through the name 
which is another value, another column in the data frame, and through the elevation. So it's like a loop uh, with four va uh, variables here. And what I'm doing in each iteration is I'm accessing this fg uh, variable, which is a feature group object, and then I'm adding, I'm, I'm using an at child method. Uh, this at child method was added in uh, the last uh, versions of volume. It wasn't there before, so you need to use at child now. And you basically you, you append an element to this bigger uh, object. Uh, what you append is a marker. So in each iteration, you are appending markers. So let's say we have sixty rows of data in the data frame, and you'll have you'll add sixty markers in the feature group object. So you have these attributes here, pop-pop, and you access a pop-pop object from volume. And what you want to display in the pop-up window is the name. So the name will be extracted uh, from this data frame column. And then you specify what icon you want to use. And here I'm passing here color elevation. So for the color, I am generating the color dynamically, uh, which is I'm iterating here for elevation in, so this is just a variable, and uh, this is accessing the values of this data frame column. And in each iteration, what I'm doing is I'm executing this function. So color, and uh, then I'm passing there the elevation value. For instance, I uh, will go through the first elevation, I will get, let's say, a thousand meters or feet, whatever you like, and uh, that will be passed to this function. And what this function will do is, uh, depending on the elevation, it will uh, return green if the elevation is, uh, let's say, uh, lower than a certain value. And this certain value is, uh, you know, I've divided uh, the entire range of elevation uh, by three. So I have three segments there. And I say if, um, uh, if this elevation value falls uh, in the first segment, then return green. So return call called green. If it's in the second segment, return orange and red. So depending on the elevation value in each iteration, we will get a uh, string here. So red, orange or green. Uh, so the color parameter uh, will be equal to a string of green, orange or red. And then we have this icon color, which actually is um, icon color is the color of this small circle in here. So I've put uh, green for all of them, but you can construct a function for that too. And yeah, uh, once I have this feature group object uh, with markers inside that, I add this feature group to the map object, so with, which is the main object that I created in here. This was uh, is a map object, so uh, we're using the ma map method to create a map instance. And then uh, in the map object, I can add other elements now, and I use uh, the add child method for that. In this case, I'm using I'm uh, adding a GeoJSON layer in there, and I I use the GeoJSON method for that, which has a attribute a parameter called data, and that is equal to open. Uh, what geojson from orgr.json, uh, which is the input data, so this file here. Let me close that. Uh, and yeah, you need to use that. And that will read the data from this file. And then this, um, we're still inside the geojson uh, method here. And we're getting other parameters actually. Uh, so geojson has a name parameter. Uh, look here that I have. Put a break line here, so you're allowed to have break lines in Python code after a comma, like here. So unemployment for the name, and so unemployment will be shown in here for the layer panel. And then you have a style function there, which is responsible for the colors of your polygons. Uh, here I've put a lambda function, uh, which is quite complex actually, but if you take your time, you'll understand it. So basically it says, um, uh, this is a CSS attribute, so CSS is responsible for the styles of, of an HTML page. 
and we say uh, the field color will be green, so the field color of those polygons will be green if mm, X properties pop 2005, which actually is, if you look here, so mm, uh, we are accessing the properties key of the big dictionary, and then uh, this key has as a value another dictionary, which has this key. So we're basically saying properties, and from properties uh, get the value of uh, population. And I'm not sure why I've named this unemployment when I have population data. So let me change that and save the script. Uh, so yeah, mm, uh, basically what we're saying is uh, put green in the field color. If uh, population is less or equal than this number, else, so otherwise, put orange. Uh, but put orange if uh, mm, this uh, population is between uh, this value and this value. Otherwise, which is if population is greater than this number, put red in front of field color. Uh, yeah, I hope that is clear. And lastly, what I'm adding here is another child, uh, which is a layer, co layer control, uh, which will generate this uh, layer control panel in here, so that you so that you can toggle on and off these layers. Mm, great. And lastly, very lastly, uh, we save. Uh, the map object that we created in here. So we created a map object and we uh, added these children in there. And lastly, after we have added everything there, uh, we can save that to a HTML file uh, using the save method. So out file is a parameter and this is an argument. Great. Now I'll save this and you can close that and maybe close the browser and then uh, shift right click if you're on a Windows, if you're on a Mac, you will have to open the terminal and browse through your folder where you have your um, script.py file and say python script.py and yeah, mm, this was generated as you see here is the file. Now if you want the a uh, big tutorial, so, so it is, I have a mega course, a Python mega course, where this tutorial is actually included in more details. And you also learn how to make web applications there and desktop applications, web scraping and other things. So you can check the link of the tutorial in the description, including a discount coupon code. And yeah, this is the map. I hope you enjoyed this, and thanks a lot. See you.